Hey everyone, Steven here, and today I'm finally getting around to my review of the Razer Nari Ultimate headset, and as with all of my headset and mic reviews, I will be using the microphone the whole time with no edits in post outside of adjusting gain to make sure that the levels are all even, but that does mean that you may hear the occasional popping or background noise, but I just don't like the small samples that other reviewers do. I want to make sure that I give you as much time hearing what the microphone sounds like as possible during this video. Now this headset launched in September of 2018 for $200 and is no longer currently listed on Razer's US site for what I've been able to find, although you can find it on the New Zealand version of the site for $384, which is a crazy price to pay for this. I do want to point out that you could get this on Amazon right now, and there are usually discounts though, so a lot of times we're finding this about half price off. It does beg the question, is this five-year-old headset worth it even with the discounts now? To me, the short answer is going to be yes because I think this is a solid product with a lot of really cool features. But before I go any further down this path, let's cover the specs and the software. The Razer Nari Ultimate has 50 millimeter neodymium drivers with a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, 32 ohm impedance, a sensitivity level of 170 decibels plus or minus 3 decibels, and 7.1 surround sound using THX spatial audio. The retractable microphone is a unidirectional ECM boom mic with a frequency response of 100 Hz to 6.5 kHz and a sensitivity of negative 42 decibels plus or minus 3 decibels. Battery life is 8 hours with the lighting turned on, the lighting here can be found on the outside of the ear cups illuminating the Razer logo, and then you can get up to 20 hours of battery life without any lighting on. For connection types, you have a wireless receiver that is USB type A that conveniently stores on the right ear cup, or you can connect this via a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. One of the main draws of this headset is the haptic feedback or hypersense as Razer calls it, and they don't have any specific info listed on the mechanics behind this, unfortunately. Looking at the physical features, this has a unibody aluminum frame, auto-adjusting headband with swiveling ear cups, gel-infused cushions, and a high-density foam with plush leatherette, which all of this is going to come in handy because the headset weighs 432 grams, which is 0.95 pounds. So almost a full pound on your head here. On the left ear cup, you will find the auxiliary input, micro USB charging port. This being a little bit older, we don't have USB type C here. The power button, the power LED light, the game slash chat balance scroll wheel, and the mute button. On the right ear cup, you have the opening to store the USB receiver and the volume scroll wheel, and that's it. For compatibility, you can connect this to any PC via the USB dongle or the headphone jack. For consoles, this will work with an Xbox One, and then it should work with an Xbox One X. I don't have that to test it. But for an Xbox Series X, I actually could only use the headphone jack. I can't get this to connect wirelessly, whether that's through Bluetooth or the USB wireless adapter for whatever reason. I spent a couple hours trying to do this, looked at everything online. I tried using the Razer app on the Xbox and then I actually went back to the PC and then there's a pairing utility that you can do. I did that. So you're pairing the headset to the USB wireless adapter, hoping that would fix it. Essentially, it's just not going to work from what I've been able to find. You're going to need to use the headphone jack with an Xbox Series X. Oddly enough, you can use the USB receiver with a PlayStation 5, though. And with the PlayStation, you have access to their 3D audio, and everything sounds and performs really well on the PlayStation 5. I don't have a PlayStation 4 to test this with, but regardless, for all of the consoles, you're only going to get the static light cycle effect with this from what Razer is saying. 
and then you're going to get the 2.0 stereo. You don't get surround sound. PlayStation being a little bit different because their 3D audio, when you utilize that, basically it's surround sound. So you do, like I said, have access to that. But anything else where you're just plugging a headphone jack into, you don't have any surround sound. It's just 2.0 stereo. And then again, you have the static cycling light effect here. What was a little bit odd about this is that I set the lighting on the PC to be off. So by default, it was off when I tried to use it with any other device like a console or something like that. I went back, turned it on, and then it stuck with that lighting effect. So although they are saying, hey, you just get this static light cycling effect, I think if you have a PC, you can change that and then it will remember that and keep it if you're going to go over to another device. Now that I've covered the specs and the physical features and connection options, let's go ahead and shift over now to the software. Inside of the software, you have your devices lined up here. We're already set up. The first tab is the sound tab, and here you have spatialization modes. With this, we have stereo, surround sound, and game mode. By default, it wants to be in stereo mode. I'll come in here, turn on surround sound. You get to dictate what program is going to use what. You just need to spend a little bit of time setting that up. We'll look at that here in a second. Underneath that, we have sound properties, just uh, an image. There's nothing to click on here. I'm assuming if this had certain options, it would pop up here in regards to highlighting areas potentially, but right now it's just an image. And then it says here, it does recommend that you set the PC volume to max, and then you can use the scroll wheel on the headset to adjust the audio with any game or anything else that you may be doing on your PC, which is what I do by default. Next, you have the mixer tab. Here, we have the THX spatial audio turned on, and this is where I'm saying you get to dictate what the program or the game is going to do by default. With this, depending on the game, if it has the option, it'll pop up here for the different game modes. I have Cyberpunk and Doom Eternal with the THX environmental mode. Again, setting these things as default, you get to calibrate this if you want to. In terms of overall calibration for the 7.1 surround sound, you get to shift these within their little zone. I don't want to click on this right now because it's actually going to do a test. So as you're moving this, it's playing audio in real time. So you get to hear how that is affecting the audio as you're moving this, which is really, really cool. But you get to shift these wherever you want, set them up how you see fit. Next, after that, we have the Enhancement tab. Here, first one, we have Bass Boost. I have this turned on 52%, so we have Low and High. That's going to go from 0 to 100%. Underneath that is Sound Normalization. So with this, we click on the Information tab. Normalizes the loudness of audio played to avoid sudden and unpleasant increase in volume from effects such as explosions. That comes into play because that will affect the haptics here and the intensity with that. After that, we have a voice clarity. With this, improves the quality of incoming voice from communication applications. So I have that turned up a little bit. And then haptic intensity. The reason I have this turned off is as I'm trying to record for this review, any noise that's being played back, it's actually doing the haptics. And I don't really need that for me just listening to my voice, right? So as I'm monitoring and things like that, it ends up actually affecting the audio. So if I'm trying to record my voice and there is background music and it's doing the haptics, that does affect the microphone. You will hear the rumble and the vibration. So do keep that in mind. Scaling the haptics here, though, is something you're most likely going to want to do because high is very intense. And so with this, I have mine at 60%. 50-60% seems like the sweet spot for me. You turn it really low, and you're not really going to pick up on much of anything. So maybe one of those things where if it's happening too much in a game, you could scale that. But high... I, I don't know how many people would keep it high all the way turned up because, again, it's so much rumble. It's almost distracting. But I like that there is a scale versus, like, this is either on or off. After that, we have the EQ here. So audio equalizer, default, game, movie, music, and custom. 
any of these, I can come in here and, and change this if I wanted to, right? And it will stay like that by default. So if I come in here and just completely adjust the game mode, it's going to stay set until I reset everything. But again, we have our different profiles. They all, to me, sound really good. I do prefer game mode, but if I wanted to do my own custom one, I could come in here and create my own custom one and just start moving all these around to whatever I see fit. After that, we have the microphone. So obviously the microphone is turned on, mic volume at 100%, mic sensitivity, I have this set to high, adjust the setting to remove unwanted background noise or increase the amount of mic output heard. With this, obviously it's underneath, it says I can preview this to see what it's doing in real time. I have that set here, so as I'm recording the voiceover work, it's going to eliminate the fans on my computer, hopefully. It's going to remove the AC in the background as the furnace is kicking on. And I've listened to it. It does a pretty decent job of this. If you have an RTX card, you could, of course, use the NVIDIA broadcast, and that's going to use AI to filter everything out. So you have other options, but I do like the fact that this is here. After that, we have the mic monitoring with the side tone. Don't have this turned on. I usually don't monitor the audio here. I check it, and then once I feel like it's good, I just leave it alone. Enhancements. This is what this is going to be by default at 55%. But looking at volume normalization, that ensures consistent output levels by reducing sudden loud noises and increasing soft audio. Vocal clarity isolates and increases the volume of the vocal range keep shifting over this of your microphone and then mic noise cancellation change the intensity of the microphone phones noise cancellation to enhance voice pickup so as we're here we'll just start scaling this up so all the way up to high on volume normalization we'll scale that all the way back down to 55 percent vocal clarity we're going to slowly scale this all the way up to 100 percent here and this is vocal clarity we'll slide that back down and then we'll go to mic noise cancellation we'll turn this all the way up here to 100 percent and then we'll start to turn that back down and actually if we go all the way low that is going to be mic noise cancellation at 10 percent vocal clarity all the way down to 10 percent and then we'll do the volume normalization all the way to low here. All right, so that was the mic tab for lighting. I have this turned off. I do prefer the longer battery life. You're not gonna see the lighting on your head. So not something I usually keep on with any headset because I prefer longer battery life over something, again, that I'm just not gonna see, but it is there. So we have the brightness, you can scale that switch off lighting so if the display turns off the lighting on this turns off i do like that because a lot of times you end up draining battery if the headset is sitting there and it hasn't powered off yet any of the effects here the basic effects audio meter breathing spectrum cycling and then static i have advanced effects if i want to do that and with this you get to use this in chroma studio ton of different effects that you can do with that and then you can sync everything up together as well won't be covering that in depth here because there's so much going on but you can again link this to the chroma studio last power setting wireless power saving so if you want to do this so device will turn off after x amount of minutes it only scales down to 15. i wish you could go lower with that just more options um down to like at least three to five but that 15 is here, and then it can go all the way up to 60 minutes. But if I'm inactive at 15 minutes, it's just going to shut this off. And we do see our battery life right here. As I hover over it, though, it doesn't give an indication on that. Something else I wish. I wish I could see some of that information on the power tab here. But this has been the software. Let's now shift over to what I like about this headset. So to start here, I do want to say this is the most unique experience over any previous headsets I've used before because this has haptics in it and none of the other headsets I've ever used have had this feature. The closest thing I can compare this to is being in a really loud movie or maybe like a 3D ride where you're feeling the vibration from the sound 
but with this it's more isolated to your ears so the rumble you would get from blasting your speakers or maybe a normal headset at a level that would actually just cause your ears to hurt is achievable and scalable to create a more immersive experience with this headset personally i really like this it's something i don't know that everyone will like but for those who do i think this is going to be another cool feature to explore I do feel like haptics started taking off more with VR, and it's still there, but it's not expanding as much as I figured it would be at this point. It seems like it was really starting to take off and then kind of hit a plateau, and you just don't hear about it as much anymore. And with this launching in 2018, that's kind of the beginning of when I remember everything starting to uptick with just seeing more devices that were utilizing haptics to make VR specifically a more immersive experience. Now, if you don't want the haptics on, you can turn this off, of course, and this headset still has solid specs, so you're going to get great audio quality with this. The microphone, not so much. It is very tinny with this, but I'll talk about that more in a little bit. But you have plenty of options with this, similar to a lot of the other Razer headsets you would find in their various lineups, but other brands may lack some of the features that you do find in the software specifically with this. But that also is going to be very specific to PC. You don't get all of these features when it comes to consoles. So if you play consoles exclusively, I wouldn't recommend getting this. They have like console specific headsets geared towards Xbox, for instance, that I would say, hey, get that version because you're gonna get more features out of it than you would this one. In fact, there is a version of this headset that is geared towards the Xbox. I'm gonna talk about that more here in a little bit in the bad section because there's stuff with that that I don't particularly like, but you do have those options, so be very mindful of that. But in regards to the haptics, this is a very cool feature. I personally, like I said, really like this, and I do like the fact that they are allowing you to scale it. It's just a different level of immersion when it comes to games and the audio. I like all the other tweaks to the audio that you can do, and in terms of the THX spatial audio, great feature. You get that with other headsets, but being integrated here, the environmental mode, the game mode, it just has really good audio when it comes to your games. The adjustments, again, in the software with the bass and things like that, the different profiles for the sound that you can either create yourself or that they have for the presets, they all sound really good. So that's all the really good stuff. In terms of performance there with the audio, top notch. In terms of the haptics, very unique experience. But again, it's one of those you may or may not like it. I would definitely recommend if you have the option to test it out, definitely test it out first because you're going to hate to get this thing and be like, I don't like this at all. But with that all being covered, that's the good side here. Let's now shift over to the downside, the negatives, the stuff that I don't like about this. I'm going to start with the microphone here. Nothing against razor specifically in this headset i've just never found a microphone on a headset that's just top notch there are some that are better than others in regards to this one it is definitely very tinny sounding it just sounds like you're far away if i bring this too close to my mouth you're getting more popping there is no wind screen on this so there's not a ton of protection there i do like the fact that it is retractable that is very nice but the performance is just lacking, even with the adjustments in the software. With those adjustments in the software, I've been able to make this sound a little bit better, but I have noticed that anytime I'm talking, you're going to hear this, I don't know, it sounds like an electrical noise. It sounds like, I mean, literally like electricity or static electricity. There's just a noise here. If I pause for a second, you don't hear the noise anymore. For whatever reason, I haven't been able to get this to go away. So let's go ahead and filter that out now so you could hear what would this sound like if it wasn't there. So in Premiere Pro, I'm going to use adaptive noise reduction right now. And so now you would hear, oh, the audio is a little bit cleaner. 
or anybody that has other software options like NVIDIA Broadcast, you could utilize that with an NVIDIA GPU as long as it is an RTX card. It will filter out a lot of noise. It will clean up the audio for you beyond just the Razer software, and that will make this sound better. But just kind of out of the box, I haven't been too impressed with this. The hard part here is if I bought this when it first launched, $200 with that, I'm going to be very upset with the audio quality here. Buying it now on sale at $100, especially considering it is a little bit older, it's kind of what I'm expecting. So I go back and forth on that. But if you're going to try to create content, don't use this microphone. It's not going to sound great. If it's just for game chat, it's going to be fine. Just spend a little bit of time tr trying to tweak the audio, maybe thinking about other software options to clean that up. The last major negative that I have with this, it's a complaint against what Razer does, but also what other brands do, which is like, hey, this one is designed for PC and Xbox. This one is just designed for PC. This one is just designed for Xbox. This one's just designed for the PlayStation. They put these walls around a headset where for anybody that has multiple things, right? I have the Xbox, the PlayStation, and a PC. If I really want this to work on the Xbox, I'm going to have to buy the Xbox-specific headset. So I'm going to have to pour out more money. They need to handle all of this where, hey, once you buy the product, make it just work with everything, right? If you want some of the aesthetics to be more in line with the Xbox, that's fine. But it just feels like a cash grab when they do that. And I know some of that may be like audio codecs are different on a PlayStation versus an Xbox and things like that. I, I get part of that. But some of these things, just like the wireless receiver not working on an Xbox Series X, but it works on a PlayStation 5, little things like that are... Not, they're not only just annoying, but again, it feels like a cash grab. It, it it's, it's a complaint against the entire industry because Razer is not the only one doing it. But I just, it feels scummy to me. I don't like the fact that they do that. And there's no updated support for this. Like Razer should, like I said, they have the Xbox app. They have software that integrates with an Xbox Series X, yet no support for this device. I have to buy the Xbox specific Razer Nari Ultimate. So I do not like that. But again, Razer isn't the only culprit of this. I see this with a lot of other brands. With that, by the way, let me know what you guys think about that and if you've had that issue before when buying a headset. Moving on now, though, let's get into the gray area. I really only have one major thing here, and that's going to be the weight of the headset. This is almost a full pound. My head is rather sensitive to weight and any tight headset. With this, they have added a good amount of cushion to the ear cuffs. You have the cooling on that. So I will give them credit with the cooling gel or whatever the material is because my ears don't get nearly as hot with this headset as it does with other headsets. So I do like that feature. I do like the adjustable headband here. It feels really good on my head. But at the end of the day, this is still almost a full pound on my head compared to the regular Philips wired headset that I use, which I don't even feel at all because it's so light. This, at about the hour mark, I, it just starts to wear on my head. I want everybody to be mindful of the weight here, but I know that isn't an issue for everybody. So a lot of people may not care that it's the full pound and it may feel very comfortable comfortable for them and, and not be an issue at all. If you are sensitive like I am and you don't like a lot of pressure or weight on your head, I would want you to be mindful of that before you purchase this because it may not be to your liking. So that's going to be it for this video. Overall, you have the pros and you have the cons here. Great audio, incredible feature with the haptics. You have cool aesthetics, a lot of options in the app. I do like like subtle things like the fact that the ear cuffs swivel 
Not every headset does that, but it does make it easy to just rest this across your neck. You do have the lighting on there. Again, the cushions and then the gel liner on that all feel really good. So tons of positives with this. A mediocre at best microphone, not really something you should just be like, hey, I got to get it for the microphone. That shouldn't be a main draw. Uh, that's, again, one of the negatives here. And then looking at this doesn't work specifically with the Xbox Series X unless you plug it in using the headphone jack. But it will work on your PC and the PlayStation 5 with the wireless dongle keep those things in mind and then keep in mind of course the weight here so the question i asked at the beginning of the video comes back around now this came out in 2018 this being 2023 now is this still a good buy especially considering that you can get it for around half off i think it is because of those features that i just talked about but again the main draw being the haptics if you want to experience that this is a very unique feature, and I think it's at least worth a try. And the price point here, it earns a $100 price point, in my opinion. I wouldn't pay $200 for this, but the $100, I definitely would. So that's going to be it for this one, everybody. Let me know what you think about this headset in the comment section. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section as well. I will have a link for this in the description if you want to pick it up. If you like the video, hit the like button for me as it helps the channel out. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.